everyone welcome to my channel uh, if you're a first timer here uh, thank you for being here and for those of you who have been here for a long time I really appreciate your continued support as always uh, I did want to talk about this issue um, not just because everyone else is talking about it um, but at the same time a little bit because everyone else is talking about it because I think it is important and I do have people writing me going hey what does this mean? And we saw you make posts about deleting videos, like what's going on? Um, I don't fully understand, uh, you know, the, these new rules for YouTube. And uh, so I'm going to do the best I can to explain it the way I understand it to be. Uh, but I'm also going to put links down below to people who are definitely smarter than me, who have, uh, who I've watched their videos, like Jang Bricks. I like, uh, you know, some of his content and, uh, and he seems like a really nice guy. And he did a really great video breaking this, you know, this new rules and what they mean for people out there who do like toy content and toy reviews uh, which obviously we've done some of that here on this channel and so uh, I was like well that's really neat to get his perspective because um, obviously this does affect probably people who review things like toys movies comic books and video games uh, probably the most uh, out of everyone on YouTube anyone who does like a personal vlog or you know is a reaction channel you know, chances are, unless depending on what they're reacting to, but chances are it's probably not going to affect them too, too much, but it does affect pretty much everyone on YouTube that makes content uh, on just different levels, I feel like, uh, but also in some ways on the same level, because it got all of us, at least everyone I've seen, even people who don't make the kind of content I make, it has gotten us to rethink our content, which ultimately I think is a good thing. It's, you know, obviously a lot of people get complacent and they're like, ah, this is what I do and I just do it all the time now. Um, and they kind of get into a rhythm of it. Uh, but I'm always for shaking things up on some level, but also on this level, it's, it's a little hard. So there's a lot to you know, kind of unwind here and, and kind of unpack. So we'll dive in with uh, first, like why the new rules? Because I know some people are curious about that. So how did we get here to the new rules? Uh, what happened was YouTube, uh, they do these things where, you know, they, they pay advertisers, you know, they get all these ads and that's kind of how YouTube makes a lot of their money. Obviously they might take a percentage off like big creators who make a lot of money too. Uh, that helps, helps their, you know, their, their overall business model. Um, but then they'll put ads, you know, personalized and targeted ads on a lot of videos to kind of get people to buy things and uh, and that helps out their investors and that helps out the people that you know uh you know contribute to youtube and pay for these ads and things like that and make these deals with youtube to have their ads played so uh so that's kind of how youtube uh, in a lot of ways makes their money and obviously there's other avenues and revenue streams too but that's you know kind of a bulk of it so what these targeted ads do is they find out what you're searching for you know it's like these algorithms and these robots and stuff um that figure out okay this is the kind of content you watch on YouTube. Uh, so these are the kind of things we're going to try to sell to you because they're either in these videos or they're related somehow to these types of videos. And that's how they do targeted ads. And then most adults understand that most adults, even on a subconscious level, may even look at an ad and go, oh yeah, well, you know, you know, they might make a joke like, what am I being bugged? You know, I was just talking about this to someone the other day. Well, yeah, your phone hears you <laughs> whether you like it or not. And, uh, and it'll, you know, kind of uh, send that data somewhere. And that data will come back in a way of, you know, uh, getting you to purchase something. And so most adults, for the most part, on some level, understand what this is. But kids, uh, 13 and under, will not, for the most part. I mean, you know, there are a lot of smart kids out there, definitely, uh, who might, you know, kind of understand little things you know, on some level. But for the most part, you know, they're playing a game like on Fortnite. And then they turn it off and then there's ads for things, uh, you know, like toy, Fortnite toys or, you know, something else, you know, that might be kind of related to like a cool video game or something that they like. Uh, they'll, you know, they might buy it or they'll tell their parents about it. You know, it's like all these things. You're not really supposed to target ads towards kids. Uh, that is a highly illegal. And so what YouTube was doing was just that. And they got caught doing it. So in September, they had to like do a settlement, like a law settlement where uh, they were being sued and there was, you know, and the FTC got involved and uh, COPPA obviously got involved. And these, um, they charged, uh, I think uh, YouTube had to pay like 170 plus million dollars, uh, which is obviously a ton of money. I mean, you know, like I think about that amount of money. I know some movies are made with that kind of budget in mind and, and that kind of, it makes my stomach turn because as much as I love movies, at the same time, it's like, oh, think of all the good you could do with that money. Uh, but, uh, but you know, anyway, so yeah, but you know, they're, they're like, well, we're in a business to make movies. So yeah, that's fine. But YouTube, I mean, $170 million is definitely a big ding to them. I mean, that is hard to ignore. Not only that, though, but reputation and uh, liability and accountability, like it just makes them look really bad for for just 
letting this thing they created get so out of control that it it went back and bit them uh, because of their you know their targeted ads and, and kind of greed in a way um, of just taking it to the next level more money more money more money and that's how corporate you know people think and so there's like whatever just do it just do it just do it and boom they got busted doing it and i'm glad because if you do something wrong you should get punished for it the downside is though and the way a lot of people are looking at these new rules is that youtube got punished and in turn, they're in somehow punishing us because the new rules state from the FTC and these aren't you. I mean, YouTube is kind of making the rules based off of what the FTC and COPPA have reached out to them and said, hey, here's what's got to happen now. And so YouTube came up with a bunch of rules and a lot of them are extreme, I feel like. And a lot of them are a couple of them are very vague. And these extreme ones and vague ones are what are freaking a lot of people out and, and worrying them because there are there's real repercussions like money like there you could be fined uh if you're wrong about a video mislabeling a video you could be fined up to forty two thousand dollars so you know it's it's there's big repercussions here for people who don't make that kind of money on this uh, you know on this platform like me i do not make at all any money i don't think i've gotten anything yet from youtube um so it's 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 tough you know it, it's tough because uh you know i certainly don't want to be fined and mainly i just don't want to break any rules because like i said i treat youtube like an employer they give me an opportunity like any job would like you're know, working at Lego working at anywhere, you know, they're like, hey, here's what well, here's the tools so you can do your job and you do your job. And uh, but you but there are certain guidelines, right? And I just follow my own personal guidelines, which is no swearing, because if I was I, I wouldn't swear working at retail, I wouldn't be on the floor in front of customers swearing. Um, that's unprofessional and that could get you fired. So these are the rules I've always followed here on YouTube. Um, and, and I've always tried to really stick to, I mean, sure, a swear word comes out here and there, you can't help it sometimes, uh, but if I can, I'll try to edit those out unless I'm like, you know, in a string of, you know, rant or something like that. Um, and, and it's like, ah, it's not a clean cut or something. But uh, for the most part, I, I, I try my best and I try to follow these etiquettes. I try to follow um, my own sense of rules. And so I'm okay with rules. I'm not against rules, but I like when rules are clear. And that's why I think a lot of people out there are freaking out. So like, what are these new rules? So what they did was when I started, uh, you know, when I like upload a video, it says, is this video made for kids? And of course, I'm going to say my instinct, of course, you're looking at my content, I'm going to say no, because I know kids means like under 13. Um, I would say no, because I started the Venom vlog as a, as a, as a reaction to the movie and we followed all the movie news and the movies rated PG 13. So I would say at the least, if I had an argument, uh, that my content is for 13 plus, because I'm talking about a character and a movie and the subject matter is for PG 13. Right. And so, and since I don't swear and, and we don't show violent images for the most part, um, I, you know, except for like carnage mind bomb or something, I would say most of my videos aren't even rated mature. Um, but when I look at my analytics, I see that a hundred percent, of my audience is 18 plus, uh, 18 to 30 mostly, or 18 to 24 is a big demographic, but like 18 to 30 is like 100%. So uh, unless some of you out there have like fake accounts with fake ages on them, um, for the most part, it says you guys are all over 18. Um, so that was like, wow, okay, so that's my demographic. Uh, mostly male, I was actually surprised because I know we do have some female viewers, uh, but it was I was like, wow, like we have just a couple percent of female viewers and it's mo mostly, and I'm sorry for my my voice and my, my hiccups here. Um, this is a leftover from my, my damaged lung. So, so obviously it still happens and I don't want to do any cuts. So uh, if I can help it. So I'll try to, you know, temper that. But when I breathe too much, it's, it, it, it acts up. And my videos are, you know, kind of, that's my target audience. So I would say no, instant, instinctively, I would say no, my videos are not for kids. But the way they word some of these rules, and I'll put the rules up on screen there so you can kind of see what they consider made for kids. Uh, and YouTube has a, a great, uh, I wouldn't say a great video, but I guess it's a, it's a fairly clear video, except for the rules. Um, I'll put a link to that down below too, along with Jang Bricks and like one or two other videos that I came across that are talking about this. I'll put those videos down below because like I said, those are very well made videos. This is me just kind of ranting and talking uh, about everything that's going on. So uh, so yeah, I would highly recommend you watch those videos if you want more in-depth information. Uh, but these new rules, as you saw on screen, they, they say, you know, if you talk about a celebrity, a character, or um, or like a movie or something like that, that appeals to kids, then your content technically falls in the category of made for kids. So 
if you watch the YouTube video, the lady's pretty clear about saying, if your content is clearly made for kids and you mark not made for kids, that could cause problems on your channel because you're, you're misidentifying stuff. Because the reason why, and I know some people are saying, we'll just say mark everything safe for kids. Well, if you're wrong about that too, if someone watches some of your videos, because the FTC, I believe, is going to have people watching videos and they're going to have algorithms and robots looking for keywords and stuff. Um, if they see an abundance of stuff that they deem is safe for kids and you mark not safe for kids, then each video you get wrong, you can get charged up to $42,000. Now, I believe based off the YouTube video, they said you can have a chance to kind of appeal this. Like they may mark it and say, hey, we've deemed this you know, inappropriate for kids and you marked it for kids. So, you know, what do you have to say about that? And there's a feedback button and you can go back and you can, you know, give your feedback, say your case, whether they'll listen to it or not is another story. It depends on who it goes to or whatever. Um, I think one of the videos I, I will link down below, they have a link and I'll try to find that one too, where you can actually, if you're a content creator, you can send a message to the FTC because a lot of these people, they're, you know, they're older people. They don't really understand some of the nuances of what people do here on YouTube. And that's why these toy reviews are freaking out. Because imagine like someone like my friend Brian, who does Transformer reviews, um, his content, I would argue, is not for kids. I would say it is for adult collectors, people like me, because that's the other thing that's the nuance part. A lot of these people that work in the FTC and, and that are, you know, high up that are making these decisions, like I said, they're older people they didn't come from a generation like we did. Like a lot of us from the 80s and 90s, we still hang on to the things that we're fans of um, as adults. We're kind of big kids like that. Um, hopefully we still act like adults from time to time, but for the most part, you know, we're big kids. We're, you know, we're collectors and stuff. And so it, that's a nuanced thing. That's something that's, that's and not to us, but to someone on the outside. And so they may be like, well, he's talking about toys. So Brian, you know, in this case, they might be like, well, Brian's talking about toys and they're transformers. And that's definitely for kids. And it's like, well, it, yes, it appeals to kids. I was a kid when transformers came out and I was a big fan and I was under the age of, of 13. So yeah, you're right on that level. Uh, it does appeal to kids and kids can watch it. Uh, but most of the fans of transformers out there today are adults, you know, for, the, for most of them are adults. Uh, now they have kid transformer shows called rescue bots. And that is geared towards kids. And those are somewhat, you know, different characters on there and stuff. Whereas the other Transformer stuff, they aim towards teens and older. Uh, and so, but to a, a person who doesn't know all that and doesn't aren't on that level of fandom, they're just going to look at it and go, oh, Transformers. Yeah, I know that's a kid's thing. So this video should be marked safe for kids. And it's not. Why didn't they do that? Reach out to them. And if they, and if you basically YouTube words it as if you abuse this, if you have a bunch of videos that are mismarked, then they start coming after you. I think if you miss one or two, I think that's where you get the email going, hey, what's going on here? Why is this marked this way? So that's why a lot of people are kind of freaking out right now, toy reviews especially. Um, some people are saying like, oh, I'm just going to swear more in my video. That's what I'll do. I'll just, I'll just say more swear words and I'll drink a beer in the video. And it's like, that's not going to do it because not every, not the FTC, like they're not going to sit and probably watch all 20 minutes of your video or all 30 minutes of your video or anything like that even if you open the video with you drinking a beer they're still going to be like okay well he's still talking about a toy like you don't know the person who's going to review this so you can't put yourself really in their shoes other than just assume they're gonna they're not going to know any of the nuances of anything and they're not going to care about some of the things that you do you just got to assume hey um you know and by the way like i said by my own etiquette would not allow me to sit and drink a beer on a, on a video or swear, because that's just my personal rules. I do want to create a, you know, content that anyone can watch for the most part, but I don't make it for kids. As you know, in my channel, like we talk about Venom, who yes, is a character who's tied to Spider-Man, who is, you know, geared towards kids. But I kind of launched this channel because of a PG-13 movie and the conversations we have, we talked about suicide on this show. We've talked about, um, you know, you know, the way people get harmed emotionally. Uh, we talk about deep things on, on some level, as deep as you can go with characters like Venom and Spider-Man stuff. We talk about these things. And like I said, I feel like if a five or eight year old or 10 year old watches my videos, they would just get bored and I could, I know that's the case because we used to have younger kids watch this show and I would even tell them, hey, I appreciate you being here, but most of my content might bore you. And those, you know, people unsubscribed because they probably did. Because now when I look at my analytics, it shows no one even under the age of 18, which I'm sure 
And no, that's not true. I know some of you out there have fake accounts or use your parents' accounts or whatever, or you just lied about your age. I get it, you know, but YouTube's going to probably crack down on that too. They're going to do some more digging because ultimately what this is to do is to protect kids from, you know, seeing the wrong content. Um, and I'm all for that. And like I said, I'm all for rules too. I just don't like the vagueness of these ones. So when they say you can't talk about something that appeals to kids, you know, it, it causes problems because that's not specific, really, uh, even though in the regular YouTube video where they, they list some of the rules and they say, if you have questions, you can reach out to them if you're a content creator um, and you have that access and stuff. But uh, but, you know, I, I feel like I know a lot of us are freaking out, especially toy review channels like I review comics on here. Someone would look and go comics are for kids. And my argument would be, well, the stuff we talk about, like the, the way we break it down is from like a former, you know, former editor in comics's point of view and a writer, a current writer's point of view. I try to bring that to the table when I break things down. And again, it doesn't make me right. It's just my opinion. But because we have those kind of conversations and sometimes the subject matter is adult themed when it comes to these characters and we look for a very adult uh, reasons for them to do things and we try to rationalize stuff. These are all things, like I said, I feel like a kid would find boring. They'd be like, why isn't he just talking about the fighting, you know, um, you know, and that's not to undermine kids There are a lot of smart kids out there. But still, I feel like a lot of my stuff may feel like a teacher talking uh, as opposed to, you know, like a fan talking sometimes. And I try to walk that line where I, I feel like I want to some what educate in some ways and then also just be a fan but then also just give my perspective so it's a little bit of all three that's like kind of my trifecta there um so these new rules yeah they're freaking people out and uh, and rightly so on some level uh because if your channel like uh, you know optobotomist who is a, a transformer review channel or jang bricks who's a lego review channel these guys um you know they all their content you know i feel like they're because they're like oh we'll just market safe for kids what happens when you do that if you mark your channel safe for kids, that means the comment section goes away. So there's no engagement. And most of the algorithms that YouTube uses requires engagement, you know, the like dislike buttons. We need comments in our videos and we need those likes and dislikes. And we need you to ring that notification bell. We need you to do all that stuff because that's that's called interactivity. You know, like that's that's engagement that helps us. You know, I work in retail. Engagement's a big thing. You go and engage with customers. You talk to them, uh, you, you know, by hopefully by talking to them, you get them to buy things, you know, like that's oh, so that way that when they buy things, they hopefully, you know, they get to go home with a cool toy or whatever they want, whatever they're, you're selling, clothes, whatever, and you get to keep your job, you know? So it's like, so that's how I look at that. Everything I look at is through a blue collar lens because that's all I've ever known in my life is just keep my head down and work. That's all I've ever known. And so that's how I treat YouTube. But other people, you know, had a different approach to it. You know, they're like, hey, I'm just going to do these things because I love it. And they created these empires of toy reviews, and, you know, comic review channels and everything. And so uh, and because maybe their vocabulary doesn't, you know, um, it might upset an algorithm and the algorithm might be like, well, he does not using a lot of big words. So maybe he's just making this for kids you know, you don't know, like you don't know who, who and how they're going to decide all this stuff. And like I said, if you're not habitual with it, if you don't, you know, break the rule constantly in your videos, um, then you, you might get an email and give your, you have a chance to defend yourself. Um, but that's also why I wanted to make this video. I know it's long, but I hope someone out there who might come across my stuff will see this and go, okay, let's see what this guy says. Let's, let's hear him explain his channel. Um, but you know, like someone like Optobotomus or Jang, if they mark all their stuff safe for kids, which they, you know, I think Optobotomus did, uh, he was like, I'm just going to make everything safe for kids because I talk about toy uh, transformers and to an outside person who's looking at it from 20 feet away, they're going to say, oh, this guy just talks about toys the whole time. His whole video channel, his whole channel is about toys. So, uh, and those are toys for kids because it's transformers. So he marked his videos as safe for kids. That means he doesn't have any comments, any thumbs up or thumbs down, and you can't ring the notification bell and you can't save his video to watch later. And he will get less ads on his video now, so he'll still be monetized, but he'll get less ad revenue because now there will be less targeted and specific ads put on his video by YouTube. So this ultimately hurts his bottom dollar, you know, like which is his livelihood now. Um, and with people like, you know, Optobotomus going through personal things in their real life, 
uh, it, that's not good. You know, you don't, <laughs> I don't like to see people suffer financially. It's it's not fun as someone who it gets there sometimes too. I mean, I know it doesn't look like I suffer much with all this, but you know, thanks to credit cards and other things and other opportunities I have that some people don't, I was able to get some of the stuff and slowly pay it off uh, or be gifted things, you know, like that, or, you know, like the, the Tyler Kirkham drawing there, like sometimes you get gifted things and it's, it's, it's nice and it helps. And that's why I put it in the background because it's, it means a lot to me. Um, like that painting back there, unfortunately my TV's covering now from uh, gray matter art, you know, so it's like, I, a lot of the stuff is gifted to me and I get to, you know, I, that's why I display it and want to show it in every video because it means the world to me. Um, you know, and some of my other venom, you know, artwork and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, so, so unfortunately for people like Jang and, and, uh, and Optobotomus, you know, if they're wrong, if someone watches their video and says, well, it is about transformers, but the stuff he's saying a five-year-old or an eight-year-old or a 12-year-old is not going to care about that. So, we deem this video incorrect. And if this video is like this, then chance are his other videos are like this. So, and he marked everything safe. So if they decide to flag him and all of his videos, like off the bottom is he has over 2000 videos. That's like 80 plus million dollars that he has to pay, uh, you know, unfortunately. Uh, and who's, I mean, who has that money? Like hopefully the government realizes he's not going to have 84 million to pay us. So we'll work something out with them or something, or we'll just tell them to delete his channel or something, but that's what they want. Sometimes these FTC people, uh, some of them are just not in the know and they want to learn, but some aren't, some are just like, you know what? Screw these people who, who make a living like this, who just sit in their, you know, in their rooms and, and make videos and, and play with toys and stuff like they're grown ups. They need to go out into the real world. Like there's going to be people like that at the FTC that, you know, think like that. And, uh, and they're just going to want to shut us down. They're going to want to shut people down and make an example of people. And that's the big thing. They're going to, they want to, they want those headlines too. Like the FC, FTC crack down on these three YouTubers. Let that be a lesson to the rest of you, you know? And it's like, it's a bummer because they ultimately don't care about people out there who are trying to make something of themselves and, and don't have a lot of other avenues to do it with. Um, you know, I live in Los Angeles right now, and that allows me opportunities to go to certain events that other people who have YouTube channels can't go to. Uh, and that's why I try to muster up the strength and fight my health problems to go to some of them so that I can share them with you all, because I think that's important to do. I, I live in the city. I should do stuff like that, not just to bring unique stuff to my channel, but so someone out there who can't do things like that can watch and go, hey, that does look like fun. And who knows, maybe that'll inspire someone to move out here one day, like someone inspired me to move out here one day. Uh, but, you know, but once, eventually I'm going to move back, you know, home or something like that. Like, I'm not going to probably be out here forever. And uh, I'm not going to have that kind of content. So I'm also trying to enjoy it while I have it uh, and while I can make it. Uh, but there are people out there like in, you know, in different cities who, you know, maybe get like a comic convention once a year, you know, in like two cities away and they have to drive like six hours to get there or whatever. Um, and they do that once a year and that's their one big, you know, content that they make every year. There are people out there that are trying, that are trying to have a voice, you know, people like me who are brain aneurysm survivors and who like are reclusive and, and agoraphobic and have to battle so much just to leave the house uh, to get, you know, gas in their car, let alone go and sit and work or stand all, for eight hours a day and work at retail. Um, and now two retail jobs. I mean, <laughs> like emotionally and, and uh, you know, and physically, this is going to take a lot out of me uh, to do all this, uh, but I got to do it to make a living. And that's how a lot of people are out there, you know? And so they see this as an option too. Like, hey, maybe I can grow a following on YouTube, make friends and connect with people because I don't have a lot of opportunities to do that where I live. And that's what a lot of people also use this platform for. So there's importance to this. Like there's, you know, it's more than just money. I know a lot of us want to make money at this too, but there is more to it. There's there's fandom, there's, you know, passion. There's, there's so many creative people out in the world and they want to share that creativity. And this platform offers that. So that's why these rules freak a lot of people out too. Uh, it's, you know, cause some people to even say, oh, I was about to start a channel. Now I don't know if I want to, I kind of want to see what happens with all this stuff. And, and I get it. And people who have only made one type of content, like, you know, toy reviews, they're freaking out more than ever. Um, me as a Venom vlog, I'm worried, but, but not so worried about the Venom vlog. I feel like I can make good arguments for, for that material not being for kids. Um, I think we've only done a handful of toy or statue reviews. So I'll go back and I'm, what I'm going to do is kind of change the thumbnails and, and try to, you know, reword some of the, the headlines, maybe take the word toy out or something like that, just to kind of help out with those. Cause I don't want to delete any episodes of Venom vlog. Venom vlog is important to me. I want this like kind of how, um, was it twin perfect did this great, like 20 or 30 video series on silent Hill and they broke down silent Hill. 
I've always wanted to do something like that. And that's what this is. The Venom vlog is a is a way to document the history of the Venom character and people in his orbit, like some Spider-Man carnage, toxin stuff, you know, hybrid, um, sleeper. Like we try to get everything in there as much as we can and then also follow and track the new movies as they come out and then after they come out and lead and in hopefully into more sequels and stuff. So it's, it's almost like a giant love letter to Venom and the fandom of Venom. And I don't want to delete any of the videos. I had to already delete one one time because someone was really adamant about me misspeaking about something in the video and uh, and it wasn't even a negative they were just saying oh you were too nice to me and I'm just like really that's why I got to take down the video like that's what made you so upset like and it was the video was and it, the worst part was I even reached out to that person before I posted the video and I asked them hey can I interview you can I talk to you and the guy was like no I'm not, I'm not going to give you the time of day and I don't think Sony should give you the time of day and he was very condescending when he finally did talk to me six months later after I just made the video about him anyway and I he said I got some information wrong which of course I don't want to post wrong information so I'm like okay well I'll take it down for the wrong information but the reasons you're giving me is ludicrous like it, it's just insane it's just it's ego and and uh, and a lot of other things and and uh, and it, it made me not want to talk about that guy anymore and he probably does you know, like, and I even mentioned the video. He does great work in the world of uh, consulting and and and, uh, and visual effects, and worked hard to build himself up. I say all these things, and then he tells me to take the video down, and I'm just like, psychopath, you know. <laughs> so, and then that's so that means I have a video missing from the Venom vlog, and I don't want any more taken down. What does this mean for the Venom vlog? You know, because like I said, other people out there, I've already talked about them, their content. I don't want them to be wrong, I, and I and I don't want. I hate that they're losing sleep over this and stressing about it because I like Optibotomus, I like Jang Bricks, um, I like a lot of the YouTubers out there that review comic books and movies. Um, I like all those people; they're great. And I would say because I'm 37, I watch their content. I would argue that their stuff is not for kids because I can follow their conversations, I can follow the breakdowns they do or the discussions they have, um, and I would say most of those things would probably bore someone who's under 12. I mean, for the average under 12, you know, 13 year old, it would probably bore them because of the level people talk about stuff, um, and it's not just you know the toy, but sometimes kids come across content and they fall in fall into it, and then they're like, hey, I kind of like this, and they learn about things, and and that's I think learning's a good tool, but I also believe in protecting kids as well so it's like a double-edged sword i see the good and ultimately in what these new rules bring but i just wish the nomenclature and i wish the wording of some of their their you know what they're what they're presenting us and the rules are presenting us i wish were a little bit more clear so that other youtubers aren't freaking out so what i did on my channel was i used to do a show called the seek and destroy show that was my first show that i started on this channel like in 2014 i believe uh so five years ago and we did 100 episodes. And every episode, I did something different. I reviewed a comic in one episode, a movie, a toy. I did a lot of toy reviews, though, a lot. And a lot of them had like 30,000 plus views on them when I was reviewing like the Re Star Wars Rebels toys because I was the first person on YouTube to post about those toys. I was the first person to get my hands on them and review them. And uh, and that really blew up at the beginning. Um, didn't get me a lot of subscribers, but it, uh, but it got me a lot of views. And, uh, and so those videos, like I went and deleted them. All of the Seek and Destroy episodes are now gone. And the real downside about that is I always, the reason I started YouTube also was not just because I liked other YouTubers and I was like, oh, I want to do what they do. I think this is a great outlet. It'll help me get to talking more um, and being more personable, hopefully. And I can just pretend the camera is people and I can hopefully break through my shell of, of being so reclusive and inside and I can kind of get past that part uh, and, and, and open up more and maybe get my vocabulary up a little bit. And it helped me a lot, especially recovering from brain aneurysms. Uh, for a brain aneurysm, it's like a rupture. It's like it helped me a lot, you know, to do this channel and to meet people and to connect with people. Um, whether it was Transformer toy reviews, which I've had to delete all those, all my Transformers in my car, I deleted them all because I marked my entire channel not safe for kids. But I didn't want any of the gray area. Uh, the only time I made, I kept them was the Venom vlog ones because I was like, all right, those are Marvel Legends and Granite. Uh, like I said, no one's going to care at the FTC. They're going to see that video and go, it's a toy. I don't care if it's a toy made for and priced and made for older fans and collectors. I don't care. It's a toy. They may say that, and I'm running that risk, but it's only on a couple videos, so I'm hoping it uh, it it doesn't, you know, 
cause any uh, concern because I still feel like in those videos, we really talk not just about the toy, but the character and we break things down, um, you know, on a level to where, again, I feel like a, a kid would be bored watching it and they must be because my analytics don't show any kids watching. Although I can't fully trust that either, obviously, because like I said, sometimes they use their parents' accounts or lie about their age. So it, it's tough. It's, it's a tough thing. It's, um, these rules are intense uh, for sure, and and they're vague, and that's why a lot of people are freaked out about it. But uh, but me personally, like I said, you know, I went to my Batman channel. Every video is gone. Letters to Batman, I can't do that show anymore um, because that was kind of in a way uh, would appeal to kids. But if I'm wrong about that, or if I say something in a video that someone would say, no, this is not for kids. It's just a guy reading an email and then responding to it with a vocabulary that's above a 13 year old's level, according to them. Because like I said, I'm not going to try to talk down to anybody. And I feel like as someone who works at Lego and sees, you know, kids every day, a lot of them are super smart and they can keep up with conversations, uh, you know, with you. So, um, so yeah, so they may deem it like, oh, right, well, this is not safe for kids. I just didn't want to run that risk. I wanted fewer tags of Batman in my videos because Batman, I feel like they're just going to go, oh, he's a kid's thing. So he appeals to kids. You can't do that anymore. And I'll be like, well, have you watched some of the movies lately? Like, I don't think he does appeal to kids anymore. Um, but the, the cartoons do, obviously. And there's, you know, and that's what people are going to think of. They're going to go, oh, he was a cartoon. Uh, or they'll, if they're old enough, they'll go, oh, he was an Adam West show. That was for kids. So I had to go through. Um, I deleted the Batman channel, all the content on it. It's gone. My video game channel will stay up. I marked it not safe for kids. And in that channel, uh, what I did was um, I took away Mega Man, uh, the mobile games, anything that would um, that wasn't rated mature. So all my Resident Evil playthroughs are still there. I think there's some Halos on there, but I believe there's some mature rated Halos and some teen rated Halos. So uh, so I feel I felt comfortable keeping the Halos up there. Uh, Tomb Raider was rated mature. Um, Resident Evil, Dead Space, uh, all those games, uh, Blair Witch, Death Stranding, these are all rated for teen plus or mature rated audiences. So those are the video game playthroughs I kept. Um, and so that, so hopefully, and I marked it not safe for kids. So hopefully that stays true. And that's what I'm kind of using as my basis. They, YouTube said, go get a lawyer. I don't have money for a lawyer. So I tried to think on that level, like, all right, here's the kind of the rule I'm going to follow. If it's rated at mature or teen plus, you know, 15 or 13 plus, then it's fine. PG 13 and higher, you know, I'll, I'll keep going. Um, and that'll be my argument in case somebody comes to my channel and says, Hey, we don't deem this, uh, we deem this safe for kids. And I'll say, well, here's why it's not. It, it's based off PG-13 material. It's based off of R or mature rated material. And that's what I want to have. I want to have a concise argument, uh, you know, in defending myself. And so that's what I focused on because I feel like usually that's, those are the things when you're in court and stuff. As someone who's worked in, in court and been a part of a bondsman team, you know, who's been in court a lot of times and seen cases happen, I was like, if I have a good concise argument of why I do things and it's it's consistent, then I think that'll help me in case I get run into any trouble. So I'm going to keep the Venom vlog going because I don't know what else to do with my life without this show, really. Like if I, 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 God forbid I have free time. I mean, I would probably work on my book more and it would get out faster, sure. Uh, but uh, but for the most part, I would just, you know, uh, I, I wouldn't do much. I would finish the book and then who knows if I'd even be inspired to write more. The only reason I'm uh, like, besides it being a Kickstarter book, uh, that inspires me, obviously, because I want to I want to fulfill those people's, you know, they spent their hard earned money to help me make this book. So I want to fulfill that and, and live to their to, you know, the, my promise I kept to them, even though it's taken longer than it should. But, you know, books, I've rewritten this book like a dozen times. And so it's it, but I'm finally getting near the end of it. And I probably wouldn't have pushed myself if it wasn't for this show. Like, I know I make a lot of episodes, but then right when I'm done and I'm editing while stuff is rendering, I open up my book, my document, and I just start writing and I start getting back to it. So, and it's because I'm inspired to keep going, to create, to constantly create. And that comes from this show too. So without this show, I don't know what I would do. I don't know wh where I would be. And so, uh, so that's why it's so important to me. And it's also connected me to so many of you. And uh, that's important to me too, because the, you are friends that I wouldn't have had before if it wasn't for this show. Um, and I feel bad because people out there who were subscribed to me because of Transformers and stuff, that content is now gone and it breaks my heart. I will keep the comic reviews going 
uh, because I feel like I, that we talk about the politics of Cybertron. Again, I feel like I would just bore a kid. They're like, oh, I thought he was going to talk about Optus Prime shooting Megatron. And here he is talking about like the intricacies of the policies, uh, you know, uh, on Cybertron and the red tape that they have to go through legally to do anything. You know, it's like I like talking about that stuff. So we're going to keep the comic reviews going. I'm going to change the thumbnails, renumber the season and stuff, renumber the episodes, uh, and then we'll get, you know, we'll start moving forward with those. So there's a lot of work I got to put in this channel, but I did delete all the content that I feel is gray area. Uh, I felt like, you know, except for the few Venom vlog episodes, everything else I deleted. So we just have Highway to Hell on here, which is our Ghost Rider show. I figured the name alone, you know, shows that it's not really for kids, even though one episode we talked about the Lego version of Ghost Rider, but we still talked about the character who is a demon from hell. Um, and we talked about that. And I know some people are going to go, well, yeah, but they don't care that it's a demon from hell, uh, you know, because of, you know, what's the content is, is you talking about Lego uh, Ghost Rider, and that's a toy for kids, and that was a toy that was marked 6+, plus. and it's like, you're right, that's one of those gray area ones, which I'm like, I'm going to leave it for now, but if someone tells me to take it down, I will, uh, because if, you know, but it's, it's marked not safe for kids because it's part of a series that is definitely not safe for kids, I feel, uh, because of the stuff we're talking about and the collection I'm going through and the themes we're talking about it, so... So yeah, so I have Highway to Hell on there. I have Venom Vlog. We're going to do Venom Vlog Live. I deleted all of Venomverse because it had, it was mostly, you know, Spider-Man. I mean, I know we had some Morbius stuff in there, but it was Spider-Man, Miles Morales. I did keep the video where I went to the premiere because I'm keeping those as vlogs. And those I marked not safe for kids because either some of the language that might have been used in it or just the way it's shot or the content itself. Um, but again, if somebody asks me, hey, take that down, I will. Uh, because as far as I know, as long as I'm not habitual and break, you know, I don't have like 50 videos that break the rule. If I have like a couple, according to YouTube's video, at least the way they kind of word it. And again, it's still kind of vague, but still they say they'll, they'll give you a chance to, you know, appeal it. Um, and hopefully they'll give you a chance to delete it. And if so, then I'll just delete them, you know, no problem. So I'm going to go through and change some thumbnails, work around some things, uh, fix some of the tags on some of the videos. So I'm going to be working on that for a while. I think all these new rules go into effect January 1st. Um, and so, yes, as of right now, Venom Vlog's still going. I don't plan on stopping that. Next season's going to get even more intense because we're going to be talking about a character that has military ties, so it'll even be more mature rated uh, than before. And I'm going to, the way I work the new intro, I'm going to try to do new things next season. And obviously, we're going to keep Venom Vlog Live going. And in those, you know, those are just us. I'll come up with like three topics that we'll talk about on the live ones and I'll get your opinions of. And then also, if you have questions, you can ask me questions live. Um, so we'll do all that. We'll come up with a structure for that show. I'm starting to formulate it now, uh, but we're going to keep that going. Uh, till all are one and then we are going to do a dc live show uh so doesn't mean i'm not like because i delete all the batman stuff doesn't mean we won't talk about batman sometimes i'm just going to guise it under a show called beyond the source wall which unless you're a dc fan you probably won't even know what that means and i'm going to work the certain things with the uh the the thumbnails for that and the venom vlog lives that might send a signal that okay, this may not be for kids. And that's, I think, uh, an important thing too, is presentation. So I'm going to try to go through and change up some of the thumbnails, change up some of the tags, but we will do uh, Beyond the Source Wall will be a new show that we'll do here live. And it'll probably be once a week or once every two weeks. And uh, like the Venom vlog, where we talk about three topics, in that we'll talk about three comics, three DC comics that I'm reading that we can, um, you know, that we can, you know, sink our teeth into. Sorry, my my cough's coming back. All my Joker stuff is gone, which is a bummer because those videos had a lot of good hits on them um, and started a lot of great conversations. And that's what's a bummer. My my memory as I get older, sure, is still going to get worse. I mean, like I it improved there for a while, but now like I'm getting older, and so that's going to start weighing in too. And my memory does get you know uh, bad sometimes. I mean, I forget my coworkers' names sometimes. I'm like looking at them going uh uh, and they're like uh yeah, my name's Nick. I'm like Nick. Nick, yeah, you've been working here two years, <laughs> right? Uh, that's how I am now. It's like, you know, my, my, it's, I run, I'm running into a lot more obstacles than I had before. And, uh, and so I liked looking at some of these old videos in the comments because they're kind of like, you know, memories in a way. And I, I always hoped that if anything did happen to me, I would have all these videos that my mom could watch. Um, you know, if, if anything should happen to me health wise with the, all the stuff I have going on and she could always hear my voice and she could always see me talking about things I love in a positive way. And that's another reason why I kept the channel around and why I do so much and work so hard at pumping videos out is, is I think about that sometimes. And so, uh, so because of that, you know, this channel is very important to me. I don't want it to go anywhere. I certainly don't want Venom Vlog to go anywhere. We got so, you know, we made such a ruckus and, and, oh, and doors opened up so much and, you know, helping out, work, work with my friend Andrew and going to premieres. All these things led to us 
you know, meeting Tom Hardy and getting him to do an intro for the show uh, in, you know, in the second season of our show. I mean, that's just the most amazing thing. And, and I want to hopefully do that again. I'd love for this show to keep growing. And I'd love for maybe someone out there to see that I have journalistic skills, uh, you know, by the type of news I cover on here um, and the way I cover it. I hope that that, you know, leads to something like that. I've always wanted to make like an uh, an art book based on a movie. And so I'm, you know, and this is kind of my way of doing it for Venom where it's like, it's this visual documentation of the character. But yeah, I would love to, you know, like with the Venom 2 movie, I would love to, you know, grow enough and become like a, an authoritative voice on the character enough to where someone might reach out to me and go, you know what, you covered so much about Venom, you clearly know the character, you know, we would love for you to make like a, a history on or something of this character, whether it's like a single issue or like a, a, a like hardcover book for a coffee table, um, you know, to that breaks down the movies or something like that, like whatever it is, like that's my goal one day is to do something like that, whether it's on Ghost Rider or, you know, or Venom or, you know, or Green Lantern, um, you know, which there'll be some Green Lantern stuff coming up, not on this channel, but I, I am, again, like I said, someone saw, you know, a friend of mine, saw journalistic skills in me and, and, and the ability to, to talk about things I love and offered me something. So you will see something Green Lantern related from me in 2020 that won't be on this show. It'll be actually with other people who are in the world of journalism and who get interviews and stuff like that. And I'll get to go be a part of that world now uh, next year. And that's what I wanted. And that's this channel gave me that opportunity. It showed people that I could stick to something and finish it and, uh, and keep going with it too. And that's important, you know, and then that's what a lot of people use YouTube for. Of course they want to have, you know, monetary aspirations as well. I mean, nobody wants to do everything for free, but I'm at the point now where I'm like, you know what, if they somehow demonetize my channel, as long as they let me keep the episodes and keep posting, that is way more important to me. I will find, I'll go get a third job. I'll find a way to make money if I have to. I just don't want anything to happen to the show because of how important and how much it means to me. And so for that reason, next season, when we're talking about a military version of Venom, we're going to get into some really deep themes anyway. And that'll definitely send a signal uh, to anyone who's not sure about my channel going into season four they're going to be like well okay this definitely took a different turn uh for sure because i'm reading all the you know agent venom stuff right now and I'm, I'm loving it so um yeah this is a very long video i just had a lot to say and i'm sorry i couldn't make it as concise as like jang bricks or some of these other people who just broke it down me this is more me reacting to all of their videos not just simply to educate here but also to give my point of view and to give you know to give my perspective on things and some of you guys might agree you might think you shouldn't you look at youtube as an employer of some kind you might disagree with that and that's fine i mean i know like i said i know not everyone looks at it that way i'm just giving you my perspective i look at them as hey you turned in an application by posting your first video you've been hired uh now you gotta do this amount to get verified and because of all of you helping the channel we got monetized like we were monetized first and then we got demonetized they took it away from us and then you guys helped me get over a thousand view uh, you know subscribers but then you watched hours and hours of my content because that was the other thing we had to do was get like you know forty thousand minutes or something it was something really big up there and so far from where we were we were at like you know a, like eight percent of that or ten percent of that and you guys over the course of a couple months and me posting like 10 videos a week you guys were watching every single one of them and sticking to the end with them and interacting with me and engaging and that all helped this channel so this channel exists because not just of my hard work, but because of your hard work and your investment in it. And that's why I don't want it to go away. That's why it's so important to me. And I hope someone out there in the YouTube world and the FTC world, I'm going to write them a letter explaining my side of things uh, and hoping it reaches the right person. And I'll send them links to a couple of my videos, maybe even this one. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm going to restructure some things on this channel the best I can. I, I you know, And some things I'm going to do that probably won't work and other things I might do that might work. And then when I see things don't work, I'll change it and you know, it's going to be an evolving process. These rules are not just implemented by YouTube, but backed by the FTC and COPPA. And that's why they should be taken very seriously, even though they're vague and it's it's confusing a lot of us. We got to do our best, you know, and if we want to keep making content and if that's what's really important to us overall, then we will keep making content. And I hope Jang Bricks and Optibotomist, I hope nothing happens to your channels. Um, everyone else out there that, you know, like Rage Nation, who talks about movie news, right, you know, transform movie news. I really love his channel. He inspired me to get here. Other people that make stuff and content that I watch, Red Letter Media, like I love all these channels. Everyone out there works so hard uh, to make their content. And I know some people are like, oh, you're just sitting in a chair and talking. It's like, 
Yeah, but after like a 40 hour work week, I think uh, Rage and Nation, he's like me now, like I'm like him now, I guess. He works two jobs, you know, and uh, and so now I work two jobs, like, and then we still, you know, save up the energy to come and do this. It's not always easy, um, but it means a lot that you guys do watch and engage with us and that you find some value in it and that you spend any part of your day, you know, reacting to us or talking to us is it, it does it means so much so uh hopefully we will continue to do that in the future i ultimately don't feel like my channel is in a lot of trouble but that's also because i went through really hard decisions deleting things someone told me i think it was jane brick said on his video like don't be stubborn about it if you think something is going to get you in trouble cut your ties to it and get rid of it and i think he was right about that and so that's the advice I would pass on. And like I said, go watch their videos too. They're more comprehensive. They're more concise, shorter than my video. They're not like 50 minutes long, uh, but or an hour long. But uh, but I just had a lot to say about this. I mean, there's so much going on. And, uh, and I just want to explain a little bit of the rules, why people are freaking out about it, and kind of give you what I gather from their perspective, and then also add my perspective to it too, because that's all I do on this channel is just give you my feedback. But if you have comments about this, let me know down below if you have questions. Um, you know, I am not one to give legal advice. I am not a lawyer. I, you know, that's I, I can only tell you things like from a personal perspective as a regular guy, blue collar guy on the street uh, who just likes talking about venom. Like I, that's all I can do is to give you that perspective. And it's it sucks for people who I like on YouTube seeing them stress about it because that is not why we make videos. We don't, we're not here to stress out. Uh, oh, my PlayStation's turning off. Uh, we're not here to stress out, right? We're here to have fun and to meet other people who like the stuff we like. And, uh, and that's, you know, hopefully what this channel continues to do and all those other channels continue to do because I want nothing to happen to them. So uh, let me know your thoughts down below. I've talked long enough. This is definitely a <laughs> one hour video uh, about this, but uh, but I just had a lot to say. Obviously, I always do, right? Um, and I'll try to get some shorter videos up for you guys very soon that are Venom related and uh, and other, you know, other content as well. Um, mm -hmm. I have the whole day off today and I have a day off tomorrow and I got some writing to do and maybe a Death Stranding stream at some point. Uh, but for the most part, I'm going to try to focus and buckle down and get a bunch of videos made for the whole week so that way you guys have content to watch showing clearly that I'm not going anywhere. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.